Welcome to Math Studio Talk. The purpose of these videos is to help you interpret what students should be able to do and understand to meet the demands of Common Core Math. We will demonstrate various games, activities, and models that can be used within the structure of a formal lesson plan to develop flexible thinking and deep understanding. And of course, we'll show you the math. Hi, I'm Nick Timpone, and in this video I will be dealing with the number and operations with fractions domain for fifth grade, which builds from the work done in the NF domain for fourth grade. As you can see, students will extend their understanding of equivalent fractions to add and subtract fractions, and they will extend their understanding of multiplication and division of whole numbers to multiplication and division of fractions. All of the standards in this domain are important. In the time we have, we will only be able to examine the content of some of them. Let's begin with 5NF1 and 5NF2. Students worked with common denominators to make equivalent fractions in fourth grade. It is not necessary to find the least common denominator when adding and subtracting fractions, and it can often be a distraction to the process. Students can discover this by working with bar models. Let's look at finding common denominators using these two bar models and fractions. This is one half. This is two thirds. We want to make the denominator for both of these fractions the same. We want to split up the unit fraction. So let's look at the unit fraction, 1 half. We want to split that into thirds because the denominator of the other fraction is 3. And we have to do both unit fractions. So for 2 thirds, we want to divide each 1 third unit fraction in half, like so. Don't worry if the lines aren't perfectly even. That doesn't matter. Now the students can count the bars and see what happens. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we have common denominators. We have to rename them. This is all six. How many? One, two, three. So one half equals three sixths, and two thirds equals one, two, three, four sixths. Now that we have common denominators, we can add. Equals 7 sixths. And we can check it by looking at our bar model. 1, 2, 3, 6 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 equals 7 sixths. A very important thing to point out at this time is that we multiplied 1 half to get 3 6. What did we multiply 1 half by? We multiplied by 3 over 3. 3 over 3 is the same as 1. Relate this back to the identity property of multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value of the number. 1 half times 3 over 3 is the same as 1 half times 1. That's why 3 6 is equivalent to 1 half. Now let's put this all together in a word problem involving subtraction of mixed numbers. The total length of two boards is two and one-half feet. If one board is one and one-third feet, what is the length of the other board? I'm using a bar model here, and I've indicated two and a half. One, two, and a half. Let's write that up. Up to that point, we have two and a half. The other fraction we have is one-third. So the problem we have is we have uncommon denominators, and we can't do any addition or subtraction with uncommon denominators. So let's think about how we can make common denominators. Let's write our fractions. One half, and we'll put one third over here. Students have learned by splitting bars that they can multiply one half times three thirds equals three sixths. And they know they can multiply one third times two over two equals two over six. So this does two things for us. We have common denominators, and we can use those common denominators to split up our bars. 
we're going to use unit fractions of one sixth. We're going to break up each hole into six six. So let's do that. And I'm going to do it with dotted lines. And done. Now each hole is 6-6. Six, six. Now we can indicate the length of this board in the model because we have it in 6. 1 and 1 third is equivalent to 1 and 2 six. Here's 1 and 1, 2 six. Let's indicate that. Okay. Now what's the piece we're looking for? Well, we're looking for the other piece that will get us to two and a half feet, which is right here. This is our question mark. That's what we're trying to find. So let's write the equation. Two and a half, but we're going to say three six because we want common denominators, minus one and a third, but we're going to use one and two six, equals. Now, in subtracting mixed numbers, you can deal with the whole numbers first. So 2 minus 1 is 1, and we'll attach to 3, 6 minus 2, 6 equals 1 and 1, 6. Let's check that on the model. 1 and 1, 6 is equivalent to 7, 6. So let's count. We're at 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, seven. So the size of the other board is one and one sixth or seven sixths of a foot. Two and three six minus one and two six equals one and one six or seven six. Using a bar model to solve this problem does four things for the student. It allows them to visualize the problem. Secondly, it allows them to find common denominators. Third, we were able to write the equation. And finally, we can estimate the reasonableness of the answer. I think that covers everything in the standard. Notice that in all of the examples, I was writing the equations horizontally. Adding and subtracting fractions and mixed numbers vertically can lead to errors due to disorganization of numbers. On to standard 5 and F4. In this standard, we are finding a fraction of a whole number and a fraction of a fraction using multiplication. We will use two models, the bar model and the rectangular area model. Through this modeling, students will also see how and why multiplying a number by a fraction less than one results in a product smaller than the number. Let's create a story context. Your mother bought 12 ice pots, but she said you and your friend can only have two thirds of them because she has to save the third for your sister. How many ice pops can you and your friend have? Let's look at this with a bar model. OK. 12 ice pops. You and your friend can only have two thirds. So we're going to break this into thirds. This is what we want to find. OK. One, two, three. Three units equals 12. One unit equals 12 divided by three equals four. Four, four, four. So two units. equals 2 times 4 equals 8. You and your friend can have 8 ice pops. For fraction of a fraction, we will use the rectangular area model and find the area of a part of it. Let's say we're looking to find the area of a rectangle measuring 1 half of a meter times 3 quarters of a meter. So I have a 1 meter by 1 meter area model here. Let's find half a meter, approximately here and label that half a meter. 
let's think about where three quarters of a meter would be, about here, and let's label that three quarters of a meter. So we need to find the area of this piece. Let's draw it in. There's half, and there's three quarters. Now, by shading in the part that measures one half by three quarters, we can find this area. Here's the half, here's the three quarters. Let's shade this all in. Now we can look at the model and find the fractional part. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three eighths of the model is shaded in, which means that three quarters times one half equals three eighths. By relating the models to the equations, then investigating the numerator and the denominator of the solutions, Students will discover the algorithms for multiplying fraction by fraction. After a bit more practice with models, they should be taken away, and the students should be able to perform the operations using just the algorithm. And now on to standard five and F7. This is the first time division with fractions is addressed in the standards. However, it involves only unit fraction, those with a numerator of one. Students will first divide a unit fraction by a whole number, and then they will divide a whole number by a unit fraction. We will not be relating division to multiplication of reciprocal. Let's look at the division of a unit fraction by a whole number using a number line. We'll look at a problem like this. One third divided by four. So I have a number line here between 0 and 1, and to find out how to divide 1 third into four parts, we need the thirds in there. So let's put them in. 1 third, 2 thirds. Now we simply have to divide one of the thirds into four, like so. And since we did this 1 third, we need to do all of them. So let's see what the unit fraction is now on this number line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So each of these unit fractions is 1 12th. So 1 third divided by 4 is right there, and that's 1 12th. So 1 third divided by 4 is 1 12th. So how many 1 12ths in 1 third? 1, 2, three, four. So four times one twelfth equals one third. Let's use a bar model to examine division of a whole number by a unit fraction. Let's use the problem four divided by one third. This bar model represents four. which means each of these is 1. Now that we have wholes, we can divide those into thirds. Right? We're going to divide each section into thirds. Now we can see how many thirds are in 4. 1, 2, 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that means 4 divided by 1 third equals 12. So there's 12 1 thirds in 4. So 12 times 1 third equals 4. Let's make the connection of multiplication and division of fractions to multiplication and division of whole numbers. Remember the definition of division. 10 divided by 5 is the number that, when multiplied by 5, gives you 10. 10 divided by 5 equals 2. So 2 times 5 
equals 10. One third divided by four is the number that when multiplied by four will give you one third. One third divided by four equals one twelfth. So one twelfth times four equals one third. And the last problem we did was four divided by one third. The answer to that is the number that when multiplied by one third gives you four. Four divided by one third equals twelve. So twelve times one third equals four. Students should be able to solve problems like these from the standards using visual models and equations to represent the problem. How much chocolate will each person get if three people share one half pound of chocolate equally? How many one third cup servings are in two cups of raisins? Students will complete their work with fractions in the sixth grade by learning how to divide a fraction by a fraction. Thanks for watching this Math Studio talk. We hope that you enjoyed it, found it meaningful, and learned a thing or two to take back to your classroom.